So and now we come to the poetry feature part of our event. Uh, years ago, um, he used to occasionally come to, to Mind Gravy when we were at another location. And he, he was at a lot of locations. He traveled all around. He competed in slams. I, I think the name was Christopher the Poet, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, then he got uh, busy with other things, which maybe he'll explain as he reads. But uh, he came out with a new book, which, how much is your new book? I, you know what? I'll, I'll do the special for $10 as well. Wow. Only $10. <laughs> so for you all out there who haven't done your holiday shopping, whether it is for Christmas or Kwanzaa or whether it's for Hanukkah or the solstice or just because you like to give gifts, you have his book and you have his music and there's no excuse if you have someone without a gift. Okay. So, with that, and your autographs are free too, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So, um, we're going to have him come up and, and read poetry. This is his first feature in six years. Wow. Yeah. This is Moa, and correct me on the pronunciation, Ola Dumar? Ola Dumari. Ola Dumari. Moa Ola Dumari. Please come. What's going on, y'all? All right. What's going on, y'all? I'll just make sure y'all still here. <laughs> As my good friend Al Black said, this is my first feature in six years. The last time I did a feature, I, I wouldn't even really call it a feature per se, but um, I competed at the National Poetry Slam back in 2013 in Boston uh, when I was living up in Albany, New York, slamming with the team uh, Nitty Gritty Slam. Um, yeah, like you said, I, I was I was a feature, I mean, uh, a fixture in the, in the poetry community. Um, first one there, last one to leave kind of thing. Um, but to be very honest with you, I had um, a little disillusionment with, with the spoken word scene. The politics of the game kind of destroyed the art, and I'd rather just much here, here. write and enjoy it myself and amongst my friends than it be tainted with just, just pettiness. Mm -hmm. um, so I, went on, I ended up going on a spiritual journey. Um, and that took me, my, my whole life has been a, been a spiritual journey since my father passed when I was 11. But uh, about three or four years ago, uh, when I donned the name Moa Olu Dumare, uh, a Nigerian brother named uh, His Royal Highness Prince Tono Oki saw my name, and he was like, who is this Moa Olu Dumare? <laughs> I said, man, I am who I said I am. You know, I was getting defensive and everything. Uh, but then he inboxed me, and he said, you know, when I saw your name, I immediately went into tears. And I consulted my ancestors. And my ancestors said, you are a true son of Africa. I must initiate you. So since then, uh, I, I was initiated with the royal title, Isakure, which is the chief priest of divinity. So my, my official title is His Royal Highness Moa Olubumari, chief priest of the Moa Temple. I was under his charge to create a new culture for my people called Moa. In my language, it means wholeness. In Yoruba, it means I am. We are a culture of the self-created. Uh, so we'll get into that a little bit more. I have actually three books. My first book is called The Three Degrees of Knowledge, The Introduction to the Moa Temple. The second book is called The Purpose and Power of Prayer. And the third book is the book that I just released called Nazareth, which I was uh, spent some rhymes from that today, which actually I, I competed in this year's Pulitzer Prize for. All right, so y'all ready for some poetry? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. See, I, I know Al Black was gonna be a little differently because, you know, back in the day, I was ready, I was jumping and stuff like that. I never I never read from something. This is new for me. <laughs> so I, 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 I went from the spoken word thing to the to the page poet kind of thing, but you know, I think, I think it's still That's right, okay. Though. It's okay. Um, the name of the book is Nazareth. <laughs> My uh, wife, can, can, can you uh, hold up one of the books for me, please? This is my lovely wife. Say, hey, wife. Hey, hey, wife. We just got married October 12th, y'all. Let's see, man. This is the cover art, which I did myself here. Um, 
I live on Broad River Road, and this is just like different pieces of Broad River Road. Uh, the reason I call this Nazareth, uh, in John chapter 1, verse 46, it said, can anything come out of Nazareth? Anything good come out of Nazareth? Come and see. So my interpretation of that was, Yahshua, Jesus, he was from the hood. Because they was like, what good comes out of that forsaken place called Nazareth? I live on Broad River. I work on North Main. For me, this is Nazareth. And you just might never know, but the Savior might come out of these very hoods that we look past. So that's, that's the meaning behind it. And actually, the, the uh, picture work behind here is uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's church. And uh, I, when, I, when I went down to Atlanta to see that. So, so yeah, these, these are um, some poems, John. So, you know, let's get it. <laughs> this, this first poem is called The Talking Drum. They tried to silence the talking drum. But wisdom cascades with rhythms unscathed by misfortune it adapts. Praise dancing barefoot on clay floors reminded us of our roots. So the hallelujah still loosen our spirit, a holy spirit feeding us in a way without manner. The good spell of the gospel swells tears of joy cause boy, I never would have made it without you. I guess hearts beats differently for an old church boy. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but fear is their main ingredient, and God damn, they good at it. Mother's prayers, once reserved for praising God, now beseeching God to allow the baby to come home safe. A father's deterred instruction on pride, swallow it, swallow it when a steel badge painted gold imposes their full superiority over you. Don't look them in the eye like a man would because their fear of you will yield to their cowardice and no tales can be told of their testicular fortitude. <laughs> then there'll be young niggas like me that say fuck all that. Right. We only die once. So if I can't etch my story in stone, it will be etched in soul, in the soul of my people, cascading wisdoms, rhythm unscathed by a short life. For my life is dedicated to the talking drum, still speaking. Thank you. Feels weird, man. It's been six years since I did this. Awesome. Thank y'all, man. <laughs>